I have with me today a really interesting guy. He's a veteran cop. Um, he's had uh, a multiple assignments, um, all really uh, fun and dangerous. Um, and, uh, and he's on one of the largest police departments in this country. And uh, he has gotten politically involved, not for politics sake, but to improve the lives of the police officers in his police department and also the lives of the citizens in his community. Douglas Griffith, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, ma'am. It's, it's an honor to be here. So uh, let's get right, right down to it. The last two years have been really crazy for American law enforcement. And there has been this um, so much talk of criminal justice reform. And now what we are seeing two years later is that that criminal justice reform and police reform has led to increased crime, uh, increased violent crime, more criminals on the street. And that's not just happening in places like New York or Chicago. You know, people, everybody thinks, you know, Texas is, is a little immune to all that, but you're in Houston, Texas, which is Harris County, Texas, and you're experiencing all of that and then some, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. It has become flat out ridiculous here for our officers. We have uh, obviously a crime wave, kind of like we've seen in other major cities, but it's exacerbated with our court system. Uh, we had Hurricane Harvey in 2017, which shut down our courts for a little bit because there was some damage. Uh, then the pandemic hit, and we have some judges that haven't had a trial in two years. It's flat out ridiculous that we've got the same criminals over and over and over again that get out on low or no bail. So we decided to start looking at this, and, and we have uh, our Crime Stoppers here in Houston has been extremely active for us, and they do a lot of the the joint efforts that, that we work with them. And we found that over 173 people have been murdered in the city of Houston by people that were on multiple felony bonds, not just one, multiple felony bonds. We have 17 people out right now on bond for capital murder. That okay, now wait, I got to stop you there because I want I want people to understand. First of all, Capital murder means what? Because that's pretty extraordinary. Capital murder means what, Douglas? That means that you've killed more than one person in an event. You killed someone in the commission of a felony crime. Or you killed a police officer. So right now we got 17 of those individuals that are on bond roaming around Harris County. Now, if you're looking at life or death, life in prison or death, do you really think they're going to show up in court happily no we're having to send our guys out there for them and it, it's not going well for them for the most part we have had 19 officer involved shootings just this year out of those 19 shootings i think either 13 or 14 of them have been we have been fired upon first and that's that used to never happen and the public is going crazy because oh also involved shootings is up. Well, how about this? If you comply, nothing happens to you. You run, you try to injure people, you shoot at us. It's not going to go well. Well, and here's the thing. The National Police Association, we have a PSA that we're going to play at the end of this show. And it's called Comply Now, Complain Later. Later. And that we need that people need to comply with the police. And just like what you guys are seeing in Houston is people are they're actively attacking us before we're ever really engaged with them uh, or before there's ever force involved. And they're making the decisions. The bad guys are making the decisions to engage in force against a police officer. And, and then you guys, you're, you're also getting fired upon. You're getting, I know you've had a couple of officer ambushes and attacks, and it's getting incredibly dangerous, really in an already dangerous city. Although I will say this about Houston. Previously, you guys were one of the safer big cities in this country, and it's sad that that is changing. Talk about what Houston was like when you first became a police officer, Douglas. Well, I can remember when I, when I first came on, I, I came on in 90, I hit the streets in 91, and it was a different world. One, 
Crooks knew that they couldn't get by with anything. When you showed up in that baby blue uniform, they knew who was there and they knew not to act up. Uh, we did have a crime spike in the mid 90s with the introduction of crack cocaine to the Houston area. Everybody had that crime spike in the country. Exactly. And then it quickly dropped right after that. And we were doing a very, very good job of keeping keeping things, you know, fairly low. Uh, as of the started, probably right after Harvey, we started seeing uptick. And then during the pandemic, it just got worse. And a lot of it had to do with bell reform. Again, bell reform started in 2018. Our Harris County DA in the, in the courts, well, it wasn't the DA, it was the courts, signed off on this bell reform. So explain to people what bail reform means. The It started off as misdemeanors. They said nobody should be in jail because they're indigent. We completely agree with that. Just because you don't have money doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to, to post a bond and get out of jail for misdemeanors. We're good with that. The problem is it has leaked over into the, the felony courts. And now the courts believe, oh, everybody gets a bond no matter what. And it's usually going to be a low bond. Uh, you can commit a felony in Houston. You're going to get a hundred dollar bond. Just a, your regular everyday run of the mill felony, <laughs> uh, theft, you know, something like that. Uh, but if it and they will go higher on them sometimes. We've had people with seven felony bonds, and the court will look at it and go, "Yeah, we we really believe he's a danger, but we got to give him a bond." No, you don't. The law is very clear. If you have multiple felonies, then you can hold them at a higher bond or no bond. The law is very clear on that, but they believe that they, they can't do that, which is wrong. So what right. we did in the, on the fel misdemeanor side, we commissioned a study. We did a study to see how many people are actually coming back to court on your misdemeanor cases that you're not given bond. 16% in a one-week period in November of last year 16% of the people returned to court for misdemeanors. The rest didn't show. Wow. It, <laughs> I'm so blown away by that because, you know, that means most people did not show up in court to either, you know, go before a judge or have their trial or, or even really start the proceedings, right? And, and what's even worse is they're not doing motion revokes on them. To explain what that is. A uh, motion revoke is when you uh, fail, fail to appear in court, they will put a warrant out for you. They're not doing that. What they're doing is they're set, resetting the date and send them a letter. So you've got all these people out there on multiple bonds. Uh, there's one guy, he's got like 27 bonds for burglary of a motor vehicle. Because he, he it, well, they're not bonds. They're just PR bonds. You get out. You get out. And, and so we got to get out there. He's burglarizing cars left and right. Every time he gets, obviously he's not very good at it. He's been caught 21 times, but he's still right back out there doing it again. Our officers are so frustrated. We put the same people in jail over and over and over. It's like, why are we doing this? Why do we keep going out there arresting them when they're just going to let them out? Now, that was just one week in the misdemeanor courts. They have a monitor that the county is paying over. They have, they're spending nine seven million dollars for this bail reform so they hired this monitor for eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year to study this and he's claiming oh it's working perfectly recidivism is down everything's down recidivism is down because no one's going to court and pleading guilty if you never plead guilty you get caught 21 times to me that's recidivism but what's going to happen, the courts are going to are so overcrowded. We have over 40,000 cases in the felony courts in a backlog. I don't even want to know the misdemeanor number because I'm right. sure it's even worse than that. But what they're going to do is, like they always do, they're going to have to triage that and go, look, the guy's got 21 cases. We'll plead him for one and dismiss the rest of them. He'll get time right. served and he starts all over again. And that's we're starting to see that in the felony courts, too, because the felonies robbery is out of control right now. Our carjackings are up. Our robberies are up. Our homicides are up. The violent crime. 
we have to do something to keep these guys locked up. If you've committed two or three robberies and you're caught and you go to jail, how are they releasing you on bond? Well, well, and what we need to think about, what I really want people to think about as they listen to this is you're not punishing the police, you're helping the criminals, but you're punishing crime victims. And I, you know, well, I'm going to, I'm going to presume you deal with a lot of victims that, you know, oh my gosh, you know, I was carjacked, I was robbed. I mean, just one felony violent crime like that, you know, robbery or carjack or anything that scars a person for the rest of their lives. And yep, now you, you find out, uh, oh, well, not only is the bad guy not going to get punished, but, you know, he, he's not going to get charged or he'll get charged with one crime, even though he did 10 of these things. And it's got to be incredibly um, disheartening, not just for your officers, but for the citizens, right? Oh, yes, ma'am. The citizens of Harris County are in danger right now. And, and a lot of them don't even know it. They're out there with criminals that are walking around. We have over 25,000 open felony warrants right now in Harris County. 25,000. That's 25,000 felons. We had 25,000 felons we have wandering around. 25,000. That's thousand. an extraordinary amount. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We had an officer shot two weeks ago by a crook. He had an ankle monitor on because apparently the ankle monitor stops him from committing crime in some way, shape, or form that we don't, we haven't learned yet. So it, it, it is getting ridiculous. And, and sadly, uh, we had an officer mall shooting the week before that, and the guy's wanted. We have a small car chase. They block him in. The guy jumps out of the car, reaches back in the car, comes out with something in his hand. The officer shoots him. It's his shoes. And everybody wants to yell, yell up and down. Oh, he killed that man, killed him for no reason at all. Had he complied, he'd still be here with us. Yes. Real simple. And police Real. officers only have a quarter of a second to make that decision. And again, in a community like Houston, where, like you said, 20 years ago, that when the police showed up, the bad guys knew, okay, it's time to behave. It's time to knock it off. Now it's almost like the police show up and it's time for me to get as a bad guy to get more violent and yes, that ma endangers your officers and that causes them to have to make decisions like that, where when a guy pulls something out of the back seat, I've got to assume it's a weapon. Mm -hmm. Well, again, you're looking at a court system that has failed the citizens of Paris County. It's failed our officers. Uh, we worked really, really hard in the primary election here, and luckily, uh, we, well, let me back up a little bit. We had an officer, Jeffries, that was killed in the line of duty mm -hmm. by a crook that uh, a felony court judge in the 208 District Court released on a third bond. Uh, just let him walk. The, of course, he didn't show up to court, so they filed a, a motion to vote, and they had a warrant for him. The officers went to get him. He opened up on our officers, shot one, killed Officer Jeffries. We made, I made it my mission to go after that judge. Mm. And that judge and four others didn't make it out of their primary this year. And I was very happy with that to see that they weren't. Now, on the flip side, those same judges have refused to hold any more trials this year. Which How can they? Isn't that their job to hold trials, Douglas? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So how does that work? Uh, apparently, they can get paid for doing nothing <laughs> because the only way to get them out is through election. And now they know they're they're a lame duck. So there's no reason for them to do anything. They're not starting new trials or not doing anything. And that's really sad for the victims because there's plenty of crime victims out there that want their day in court. They want to see that crook go to jail. In Texas right now, our prison system is 20 percent empty. Because a lot of the county, us, Travis County, some of these other liberal areas in Dallas County, they're not putting, they're not holding trials. They're not holding people accountable. So you've got a decline in the prison system. There's plenty of room for them. Harris County Jail is so overcrowded. We are busing crooks to uh, Louisiana and paying them to house them for us because our courts aren't having trials. So you know, whatever happened to the Speedy Trial Act, because some of these people are going to get off on that. And right. that's sad. Oh, for sure. 
Is See, it, and this is the thing, Douglas. When 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 people like you and I started the police academy, we didn't talk about politics. In fact, you were kind of told. I bet, I'm guessing you and I were raised the same way, where you didn't talk politics, religion, and what somebody made for a living. And right. and uh, and you know, politics were not part of our job. Our job okay. was to protect the citizens, regardless of their politics, race, religion, sexual orientation, all of that. But now this has become unfortunately a political issue and that's what you with the houston police union you guys have had to get involved politically haven't you oh yes ma'am it's it's all about politics nowadays and that's really sad there were there was mm -hmm. a point in time in my career i was like you should have to pay politicians to to meet with them or do the right thing <laughs> that's the only way you do it now mm -hmm. the sad the sad situation is we have to have a pack uh group and we have yeah. to go out there and, and have interviews and find the right person for the job that we can support. Uh, luckily, we've been we've been you know doing very well by that. But again, we shouldn't have to. The 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 leadership in our our city does a very good job for us. The mayor of Houston does a great job for its officers. He he takes care of us. He makes sure if we need extra classes, he tries to get them for us. But you know as well as I do. In this current climate, you can't get people to do this job. They don't want to do this job. They can go out in the private right. sector where they're not going to be vilified every time they make a decision. They're not going to be put on TV for that five-second clip. They can go be a normal citizen and not have to deal with it. We, Our last class, we graduated 52 out of 70. This class will only have 50. And again, retirements are up because people are hitting that age. Was you know they I, I'm a short timer here to be quite honest with you, uh, and my goal in life was to be the president of the union. I was a gang and tack officer. That's all I ever wanted to do, and uh, I ended up here when one of our vice presidents retired and the president asked me to take it. And I, I actually turned it down. Two days later, I got in a shooting with a couple of home invasion suspects. And my wife said, hey, guess what you need to do? <laughs> so there I was. That's a smart woman. <laughs> oh, she was. She, Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so now that I'm, I'm here, though, I think it's important that we stand up and have a voice. I have no problem calling out political officials that can't do their job. And in Harris County, we have plenty of them. Uh, we have a corrupt uh, county system that allows people to be in that position that are one, unqualified, but number two, they're making themselves rich. You can't tell me someone that goes into politics poor comes out rich and it's just by the meager salary they're making. No, there's more behind it than that. Yeah. Well, and let me ask you this. So did they start this, The I mean, and I know the bail reform started before 2020. You also have... Um, a progressive, a more progressive prosecutor, and we'll talk about how that's changing. Was this all in the name of um, making the justice system more fair, or what? What was the original point of all this? Well, I think uh, you know, there's there are people out there saying it's unfair that you shouldn't be poor and and being held in jail just because you're poor. Again, we agree with that. We don't have a problem mm -hmm. with that. But you also have to look at the reality of the situation. If you prove in time and time again, you're not going to be a productive member of society, we got to keep you away from society. It's real simple. This is not like this is some kind of grand equation that we need to figure out. Bad people are bad people and they need to be locked away from the rest of us. If they can't keep our social norms, then they need to be where they belong in prison. And, and I think we, that's something... I got to say that's something we're seeing. People are constantly pushing the envelope of social norms, aren't they? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Every time you turn around, there's there's something out there that says, oh, this should be OK. That should be OK. Uh, this really shouldn't be a law. And right. again, that's not our call. And a lot of people sit there. Why are you doing this? Well, because it's illegal, but it shouldn't be. Well, it still is. So we need to deal with it. And if they, you know, elections have consequences. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that right here in Harris County. Now, we had a couple of these, what I call rogue judges, do an interview the other day, and they flat out lied to the public. They tell, you know, tell the public, hey, look, 
the DA's office can ask for a hearing for higher bond. Well, in every case, in fact, there's been over 1,200 cases in which the DA's office, a liberal leaning DA, has filed motions, fill out the paperwork, hand it over to the judge saying they want a higher bond or no bond. They have been disregarded almost every single time. But the judge is going to get on TV and go, oh, they have to ask for a hearing. When they present them with that form, that's the motion. So the judge is being very disingenuous to the public. Mm -hmm. And our DA, she started to realize that they're making her look bad because, it, again, it falls back to the DA's office to bring all these charges. And when they have to triage it, who has to decide which cases are going to go forward and which ones are dismissed? The DA's office. So she's had to go in and dismiss 76% of our misdemeanor cases. 76% dismissed. No trial, no, no plea bargain, no nothing. And those are and they, crimes where someone is the victim, right? Correct. Who thinks correct. they're going to get their day in court. Yes, ma'am. Douglas, where can people find you, find more about the union, what you guys are doing? Yes, ma'am. I'm on social media. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Griff3945, G-R-I-F-F-3945. -F -F I'm on Facebook as Douglas Griffith. Y'all are welcome to, to reach out to me anytime. Uh, also through our union, dgriffith at hpou.org. Y'all are welcome to email me anytime. I'll be more than glad to give you a call back and uh, discuss anything y'all would like. Douglas Griffith, thanks so much for spending time with us today. And if you would like more information about the National Police Association, visit us at nationalpolice.org. Ma'am, put the gun down! Put the gun down! Last year, law enforcement officers were involved in hundreds of thousands of use of force incidents. A use of force incident is when an officer must use nonverbal tactics to gain control of a dangerous situation. Put the knife on the ground. In many cases, officers have no choice but to use force when a suspect doesn't comply with a lawful order. Use of force is always ugly. No one likes it, especially police officers. Together, we can help de-escalate these dangerous encounters. Help police officers by complying with their lawful orders. Don't attack, attempt to disarm, or flee from an officer. Use of force is an officer's last option. Most incidents can be avoided by not resisting arrest. If you feel you've been wrongfully detained by a police officer, then seek a legal solution after the encounter has been resolved. Let's keep everyone safe. Comply now and complain later.